Thank you. Hey. Hey, Regina. How are you? I see friends. Please welcome to the stage Dr. Ibram Kendi. Good afternoon, everyone. So it's, thank you, Cap, for the invitation to speak very briefly about race in America. So, so we, we conceive of this issue as quite complex, right? We, we understand it as complicated. We argue about it constantly. We imagine it is difficult to understand the problem, difficult to really settle on a solution. Well, I disagree. The race issue is quite simple. What makes the race issue complicated is us, is our shifting ideologies and self-interest, our false and fixed understandings of history, of scientific data, of what we see. We cover up the race issue. We make it elusive. But when we strip it naked, when we stare at its body, when we dissect it, when we understand the history that made it, the problem and the solution, the question and the answer appear rather simple. The central race question that we've been asking since the founding of this republic is this. Why do racial disparities and inequities exist and persist in our society? Americans historically have offered two answers. The first, bad people. The second, bad policies. This is the central conflict over race in America. Bad racial groups or bad discrimination. Either black workers have been twice as likely as white workers to be unemployed over the last 50 years because there's something wrong and inferior about black workers, or this racial disparity is the result of job discrimination, since the racial groups are equal. It is difficult to see this central conflict because we're not willing to admit a simple truth. When there are racial disparities, when there are disparities between groups, the, the only two causes are unequal groups or unequal policies governing the equal groups. It is difficult to see that America's central conflict is between racist ideas and anti-racist ideas, between those racist ideas that suggest certain racial groups are biologically, culturally, or even behaviorally superior or inferior, and anti-racist ideas that, that know the, race, the races are biologically the same, that equate cultural and behavioral and bodily difference. It is difficult to see that America's central conflict is between racist policies that produce racial inequities and anti-racist policies that produce racial equities. There's no such thing as a not racist policy, a not racist idea, or even a not racist person. There's really no neutrality in the racial struggle. The central conflict is between racism and anti-racism which is as historic as it is enduring, as enduring as it is obscured. We must see not only the undeniable march of racial progress away from slavery to the president's house, but the undeniable march of racist progress from slavery to the jailhouse. Racist progress has often followed racial progress, and that is how a Jim Crow could follow slavery. That is how a Trump could follow an Obama. It, it is hard for us to see this dueling history because we have misidentified the parents of racism as ignorance and hate. I used to think that, that ignorance and hate caused people to produce racist ideas, and these people with racist ideas produced racist policies. But that was my ideology thinking, not historical evidence. History shows quite the opposite. 
racist policies leading to racist ideas. Time and again, powerful Americans produced racist ideas in order to justify the racist policies of their era that benefited them, in order to redirect the blame for, those, for their era's racial disparities away from those bad policies and onto bad people. Our racial disunity stems from our ignorance and hate. Our ignorance and hate stems from our racist ideas. Our racist ideas stem from our racist policies. The racial struggle is a power struggle over policy, a power struggle between racist and anti-racist, between those demanding racial privileges for a few and those demanding equal opportunity for all. This is the racial struggle in all of its nakedness. It is rather simple to see. The difficulty, of course, is winning the struggle, is changing policies instead of people, is creating an anti-racist America. Thank you.